Get yeah. out of here. It's where Cheney is. <laughs> Look, it's incremental. But... Let me tell you something. I think the biggest problem in this country is not FEMA. I think it's people's ignorance of their own government and the lack of civics. I agree. I agree. Yeah, people need to. I agree with it. Well, look, Schieber, look, look. Schieber it's Schieber not says, FEMA. It's who runs FEMA. It's the yeah. it's the forces behind this power. They can them. use any kind of government job to, to 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 mess with people's lives. The government can use the IRA, IRS to destroy you. Exactly. They can use the military. It's just one more CIA. tool in their box. He's, so he's, he's on target. FEMA's I'm in agree. Of, I agree. Of, Go read the executive orders, dude. We Take. may be strung out on watching sitcoms and Wheel of Fortune and drinking beer, but the American people would get their act together and they kick are. Some ass they are. If the government liberals tried to and do that. conservatives are coming together like I've never are there, seen are, them come together, because people are worried about this. And more and more of what Congress does, more and more of the checks and balances are being removed in the name of dealing with the crisis. Now, I want the Speaker of the House and Leader of the Senate to be involved in the continuity of government program. They've gone public. They were very upset about it. So we got a problem here on the Speaker of the House, a Republican, and the Leader of the Senate, a Democrat, are okay. both. Why right. well, 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 FEMA, also... We keep talking about like how FEMA is going to take over the government and stuff. I'm just wondering exactly how will they do that? You haven't quite explained that yet. Again, it's by incrementalism. They're not going to announce they're taking over. Incrementally, they've been doing it. And by using disasters, especially uh, terrorist attacks, it would be uh, quite easy uh, to expand the power to condition the people to accept that level of tyranny. So it's through crises, through problem, reaction, solution, that we would see an expanded takeover. But how, how are they going to do it? Well, it's a Richter scale of, of, of martial law, of tyranny. I'd say we're at about, about five or six right now, and the mercury's rising. Uh, again, Ashcroft. John Ashcroft, you're talking about taking away civil liberties bit by little bit by little bit. And I think a lot of uh, my, my Democratic friends are a bit too hysterical about what's gone down. But, um, well, again, I'm, I'm not a Democrat, but I see no evidence I. of any of this. I see no evidence I of any of that. Of what? Yeah, what evidence? Okay. I, I mean, I, USA I, I, Patriot Act. Now a threat overseas could end up being a threat to the homeland. And in order to protect the homeland, these good people have got to be able to share information. Those who criticize the Patriot Act must listen to those of folks on the front line of defending America. The Patriot Act defends our liberty, is what it does, under the Constitution of the United States. swear up and down a bill is going to give you more freedom and it's actually uh, giving you a lot less they'll have a they'll have a bill that's supposed to give you more privacy and what they're doing is they're turning over your information to the government in the Patriot Act section 802 says that all crimes are an act of terrorism and now it's in the news they're using it to go after strip bar owners, county commissioners who might have taken a payoff for zoning rules uh, zit face kids who were found with a bag of marijuana they're charging thousands of people under the Patriot Act that have no connection in any way to acts of terrorism. They can talk all day about how the Patriot Act is for evil Arab terrorists that are going to kill us any minute if we don't submit to the nice men in black ski mask. But we've all seen evidence. Mike Wallace calmly argues with somebody who's complaining about his limo driver double parked and he's savagely arrested by the taxi police. We've got a woman in DC walking on to a subway station and the police tell her hey you can't eat a candy bar on the subway she says okay pops into her mouth they arrest her and say that she was chewing aggressively this was actually in the Associated Press right here in Austin Texas this Pakistani guy with no criminal record his family lives here in Austin came to town he videotaped the Capitol and the governor's mansion and it was a national alert you know on Fox it's all over. The Pakistanis are videotaping. Well, every time I'm a tourist visiting family, I, I videotape things. It turned out the guy wasn't a threat. But this is used to boost the terror alert and to, to scare everybody. So we have the precedent being set. You eat a candy bar wrong. You argue with the taxi police uh, about where you're parked, you get arrested. All of this. What does this have to do with America and freedom? Bottom line, look at the climate around you. We're all being treated like slaves by those who, in truth, are the terrorists. You see, that's the common sense. Who stands to gain from this threat? Who stands to gain from the threat of terrorism? The military-industrial complex. And that Congress, a few weeks ago, before it left on recess, by a three-to-one margin, passed an amendment that effectively struck down the sneak and peek section 
of the bill, which gives government the right to go in to somebody's house without a warrant, without announcing, in effect, that you're going doing a search, which, uh, according to, you know, according to our Bill of Rights, uh, people have to be notified. And so I'm moving forward to strike down all those sections, which effectively knock out the Bill of Rights. We're going to reclaim the Bill of Rights by canceling the Patriot Act. Key provisions of the Patriot Act are set to expire next year. The terrorist threat. Let me tell you something. These people have said, Rand Corporation and others have said, the entire economy will be prisons, police in black ski masks, a Nazi Germany-like nightmare. It makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up to talk about it, to read what's in Patriot Act 1 and 2, to see what Homeland Security does, Victory Act 1 and 2. We have got to get the word out now. We have got to warn everybody because this military-industrial complex and their PNAC and their NORTHCOM plans state that they will carry out the terror, that they will engineer the crises so they can offer their solution. Will it take another terrorist attack uh, to get Victory Act and Patriot Act II passed? Uh, that's a heck of a question to have to answer, but they'll be ready. If there is another attack, they're going to be ready. But right now, I think that they cannot get it passed because they're sort of on the defensive because of this magnificent vote we had to repeal some of the uh, Patriot Act. One day after the Patriot Act was passed, the world got to see a copy of it because no member of Congress was allowed to read it. It was transmitted from the Justice Department, much of it uh, written, they admitted, years before, to the Congress. It was passed while the Capitol building was under anthrax attack. Five of the six office buildings were shut down. About 60 to 70 percent of the Capitol itself was shut down. There were federal protective forces literally running around with Heckler and Koch MP5 submachine guns wearing black ski masks and Nazi Kurzel helmets inside of the structure. It was a federal takeover. Turns out the anthrax, all the evidence shows, was sent under order of the White House to the Capitol to create the smoke screen so they could pass this legislation. Bush, of course, and his entire cabinet were on Cipro, the anthrax fighting antibiotic. There should be a uh, campaign to throw this administration out for violating constitutional principles, which have been the basis of this nation's civic dialogue and legal protection for over 200 years. And so that's where the energy, energy should go. Uh, I'm doing everything I can as a member of Congress to raise the awareness of this issue. And frankly, all over this country, you've had over 100 cities pass resolutions that have condemned the Patriot Act. And it's a bipartisan effort, I might add. It's just that members of this administration and their desire to create fear and control have rushed headlong into this challenge to our basic liberties. I think the way that you ultimately solve it is to get rid of the administration which doesn't respect the Bill of Rights. We're making good progress in the defense of America. We've got a Department of Homeland Security that now enables people to better coordinate and cooperate and share information. We've got a Patriot Act, which needs to be renewed, by the way, that, uh, and strengthened in my judgment, that uh, is uh, uh, really important to allow uh, the criminal division and the intelligence division of the FBI to share information, which they could not do before. Uh, but the Patriot Act helps. It helps us to be able to, to, be able to connect the dots as the common phrase here in Washington. Uh, these provisions of the Patriot Act are important to national security. And for this country to begin to forget that uh, national security requires a robust capacity for law enforcement would be a major tragedy. Right in my hometown of Austin, Texas, we just threw out the Patriot Act. It's over 400 cities. It's over 400 cities. It's not 170. It's not 250. It's over 400 cities and towns. Just to clear up any confusion, we have shot this film over the last, well, actually, year plus. And so you'll hear us talk about 100 cities, 150, 300 cities. The news is usually four or five months behind. But the latest news reports are reporting 300 plus cities have thrown out the Patriot Act 
in their towns and four states. 